This episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett and Mike are sitting down to talk about isolation. Uh, isolation in in three different ways. And I was the one who brought up the topic, so I'll just kind of frame it. You have forced isolation. You are under confinement. You've been put there. You have You have self-determined isolation where you're like, no electronics, I'm going to unplug, or uh, you have, and and I'm kind of in the middle on this one, you had the perceived forced isolation. In each one of these different scenarios, they're all our own decision to be isolated. Being forced in isolation, you decided to, I don't know, commit a crime, and then, you, you know, now you're doing time for it. Okay, cool. The, the, I choose to be isolated is something that I do on purpose in not a bad way. I am an extrovert, don't get me wrong, but I need to shut out and excommunicate myself from the world when I write or when I read. And then I see this a lot among veterans. I'm not saying all of us do this, but you had perceived forced isolation and that is the actions of the people around you had basically uh turned you into a hermit it's social isolation social isolation correct so it's the perception of being forced into isolation well and i put it into that into that term though because we look around at what's going on and we're just like dude this is so fucked up for lack of a better way to put it and it's better if we isolate ourselves. I I do this all the time also. Like, I I believe that my neighbors like me or whatever. That's fine. But I had this thing where it's like, I go, I get in my car. I go where I've got to go. I come back. I go, I go back into my home. And I just kind of, I mind my own business. And it, it's got a perception of, like, forced isolation. It's, it's like I feel like I should isolate myself from the greater society because I just don't want to deal with some of that bullshit. Yeah. I don't want to deal with traffic. I don't want to deal with crowds. I don't want to deal with mass transit. I want to deal with woods. You know, I'm going to like, there's no traffic in the woods. I'm cool with that. I'm going to go walk through the countryside. And that was something also that I did not realize I knew how much time I spent outdoors in the military. Don't get me wrong. But when you're walking around Camp Pendleton or 20 out Palms or something, you're talking about wide open spaces, not just being outdoors, but wide open spaces. Um, I enjoy being isolated in wide open spaces. Well, all right. So that's, I can tell you from a mental health perspective, um, humans are tribal period. Right. Uh, we know this, right? You you need other humans. You can't you can't live it alone and be a sane individual. <clears throat> uh, period. I mean, there, there really there has to be some sort sort of social contact with whether it's you know other yeah it should be other humans obviously right? right but there you know what what happens when you have guys that socially isolate themselves for extended periods of time is they kind of go a little fucking crazy. Right. Um, and they have depression issues and they have uh, all sorts of different, um, you know, issues that don't really, you know, they're, it's a chronic condition that uh, seriously. Um, and, but you'll have people um, that will try to justify it. Um, because they're not trying, they're trying to not deal with issues that are way deeper that have nothing to do with actual, uh, it's got to do with social interaction and other things, but they're issues that they need to deal with. Uh, people will, you know, oh, I just need space and I need, 
whatever. And, and it might work for a little bit to improve your mood and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, you, you need to go back. <laughs> right. You need to go back to being a, a human. Um, cause the, the lack of consistent human contact, uh, um, I understand that it can, uh, human contact can cause conflict, um, and whatnot sometimes, but isolating has its own brand of problems as well. So you, you have to play both sides of the fence and that's why it's good to have your own space where you can go retreat to the woods, Michael. Right. But, but to, to, think. but to think that you can socially isolate yourself and be okay forever yeah. is not correct. <laughs> not correct. Yeah. Yeah. What's unique too is, well, now we get to choose our own social settings. I mean, you know, you're not required to go on base anymore and work among, you know, it's just different in that regard. More often than not, a lot of our social settings when we're in the core, at least for me, I mean, I was hanging out with all Marines. I didn't know anybody out in town. There were like two or three civilians that I knew out in town. One was the guy who worked in SIF. <laughs> you understand why I knew that guy. And then my tattoo artist, you know, like, those were the civilians that I interacted with in a social setting. And then now you're here and you're one veteran amongst the throng of civilians. And you're maybe you're trying to find other veterans. I mean, you're going to find other veterans. We just pop up that way in one another's lives. But, right. uh, but I mean, isolation... Isolation is one of the main reasons why we created Cigars and Sea Stories. Yeah. Because in those moments, we're like, dude, fuck that. Like, get the hell away from me with your bullshit. You know? Um, yeah. Tune in to Cigars and Sea Stories. Because it's funny. It's like when you're overseas, at least for me, when I was sitting in a hide or something like that, let's say, for instance which I didn't put up very many hides, okay? But let's say that I was out doing like a, an OP or if we we're on post or if I was working with a spotter as a designated marksman or something, you have a... What I'm trying to say is that you have a single person that you're working with. You can build rapport and camaraderie in those times, but you're also isolated. So that's yeah. that's the other thing. You know what I mean? You More often than not, two veterans and like you're good like you don't need to go to a veteran function is what i'm trying to say in order to not be isolated you can just call right. up like one dude and be like what's up bro let's go kill a turkey you know thanks rob love you bro so or like trey we've had we've had rob elliott and trey caraway both on cigars and sea stories go for it listen to their episodes I go hunting with those guys every chance I get. I'm telling you right now, Rob and I, we were side by side, smoked a turkey each. It was fantastic. Fantastic. Great hunt. And it was two Marines, separate generations, different MOSs who are now on similar missions. And so we align on our values. Um, I think that there's... There's a tidbit of isolation in that, though, also. You know what I mean? Like, you and another veteran, maybe a third guy or whatever. I mean, we do this, everybody. We have, like, our small little group that they we go and we do adventures with. That just naturally happens throughout life. You know what I mean? So that's the other cure for isolation. Right. Yeah. I, I need it every once in a while. I well, just I think I think we all kind of do. Um, it's just a matter of when is it unhealthy. You know? Yeah. And a lot of times with veterans, <clears throat> they go to an unhealthy extreme. Let's be honest. Right. Um, and then they wonder why they have a whole slurry of issues. Right. Um, because not only does the social isolation um, it might help in the short term, but in the long term, it actually causes more more problems. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there and there's a, you know, just I'm not saying that combat veterans have a have the uh, 
have the, uh, you know, we don't own social isolation. Uh, social isolation no. uh, can happen from anybody. Uh, I mean, any walk shit. of life. I mean, I have I have some teenagers that socially isolate themselves pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or yeah. Perceived to. Um, and I mean, a lot of old people, especially uh, that that I've worked with. Right. I have a tendency because either all their friends are dead, their family just doesn't slow down enough to take time to visit grandma. You know what I mean? And then it it causes all kinds of other issues. Um, Well, and that's, you know, yeah. No, Deep rooted no, no. social isolation. It, it because the the more you do it, the worse it gets. And and uh, so that's what we try to do is bring people out of that uh, that right out of that funk, out of that rut, out of that. Yeah, but yes. sometimes you do need it. It's understandable. Right. Um, well, but then, you know why you should you should use it in spurts. You know. Right. Well, we're not the only ones who are talking about this. I mean, this is one reason why we're a part of the Heroes Media Group Network. I mean, it's because there are other veteran podcasters who are talking yeah. about these, the different variables. You know what I mean? Like, Adam with the Decision Hour, the Arms Room, which I was on the Arms Room. That was a fantastic episode where they're just Carl talking Monger about guns. Show. Carl Monger, right? What so, is this show called? Gosh, knows. Why has it escaped my head? Well, I mean, Carl with a gallant few, and then, what is it, the soldier? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the the point being is that there are other folks out there who see these pockets, these different groups. Like, we're you have veterans. That is a big group. And then we have different subgroups that are within it. You know, we're more ambitious, business-oriented, so on you know, entrepreneurship, business leader, add value, those types of things. But there are other podcasts on that network that are talking about the transition, might be talking about spouses, might be talking about the community. So check out Heroes Media Group. Make sure that you're giving them a Facebook review. I recommend five stars. Um, but I got to plug. <laughs> so do I. I got to plug the network on this one also, because this is the other thing, man, is we felt isolated as a podcast. And I'm telling you right now, Heroes Media Group has been the best supporting agency that Cigars and Sea Stories has ever worked with. Hands down, without a doubt. And uh, the guys who are editing and everything else, I mean, you have no idea. I used to lie awake at night and miss sleep just fucking thinking about how we were going to manage this mission. And that is an isolating feeling. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, But, oh, God. Am I grateful to have a veteran-owned asset, you know, support asset, element, whatever you want to say, in order to call upon? The New American Veteran. There you go. That's what it's called. Jesus. Thank you. Right? Killing me. Yeah, like... Everyone's going to have a brain for it. You know, I mean, that happens. Uh, um, but, you know, I mean, they they do... I mean, think about that with Gallant Few, just to speak. That's a organization that's all about helping guys get out of isolation and deal with some issues uh, specifically uh you know with gallant few you've got them the darby project which is part of them for rangers the raider project which is part of them for marines and right uh marsoc guys blah 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 it goes on and on but these are shows that you know add freaking value man amen well, and I'll tell you another time where I felt isolated and I needed to uh, reach out was, and they're not paying us, American Corporate Partners. Right. <laughs> I would check out American Corporate Partners because one of the things that they have you do is take a Myers-Briggs Young personality test so that they can link you up with somebody uh, with with characteristics and traits that are going to drive. And you're about to commit to a year-long mentorship. I mean, you want to have that. Um. I, that was frankly that was the first time that I that I took the test and that was oh god uh that was about five years ago yeah I mean because entrepreneurship is very isolating bro right well and, and I mean it really is especially when you're in it when you're like in it um unless you have a business partner or something like that 
bro, it is. It is. You're totally isolating yourself because you're spending, you know, 12 to 16 hours a day working on your business, basically. And you might, you might have, uh, you know, you might come in contact with people, but it's a little different when you're like on, you know what I mean by right. that? When you've got to be on, uh, and you're not necessarily, you're not necessarily being yourself. You're being, you're, you're being in the entrepreneur, you know, you're playing, you're playing a role and, uh, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I definitely and know. That's why mean. one of the things too is like, so you've got American, uh, what was it? American American, American corporate business. partners, corporate partners. But then like, I didn't use them. I used score. Yep. Did one, of uh, those. which is, a, which is another, you know, entity that did some good stuff and basically put me in touch with people that actually were like, I get it, man. You know? Right. Well, then I bring up the whole Myers Briggs young personality test there because, and this came out in the ACP and American corporate partners and my score of mentorship. I, made sure that they understood that I basically I'm an ENT and then I I am 1% difference in between a J and a P. So I go back and forth in between those two. And I've taken it multiple times and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I would take it again cuz I Well, and I I say I'm not it, sure. And actually I've changed a little bit, so I I definitely need to take it again. Well, and I say it that way because uh I'm, you know, I don't want to speak in generalities, but there are a lot of us who are extroverts who gain energy by going out and being amongst other people of similar values, concepts, traits. Where it becomes difficult is when you're like deep thinking and doing all of these other different things, which I, that's what I do. I sit around and think a lot, you know, about broad, huge stuff. And, uh, and it's good for the soul if you are an extroverted person to cultivate an introverted intuition to where if you're extroverted, you can't just be extroverted all of the time. You're going to deplete yourself. You need, you need a place to be able to withdraw and regroup. And for me, it's one of those things where it's like you're out and you're meeting and greeting and you're on all the time, but I love to sit down and read and just hone right in. I love, you know, if I'm, if I'm watching TV, which is always late at night, it's always like a documentary or something, or it's just mindless self-indulgence that I can just zone out on. Yeah. You know? And see, I'm kind of the opposite in essence that I'm more introverted, especially than you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, you know, I, unless I have, I, you know, I don't really, I don't really just, spout off at the mouth or like, like in a situation, I, I usually sit back and watch and kind of take in a room before. Yeah. And I have no problem sitting in a, in the corner of a really busy room and just watching everyone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care. That's just me. Um, and then that's why I let Penny just go walk around <laughs> and do all the talking unless I have to talk. <laughs> So that's, that's what, that's a lot of times that's what happens. So it's like, I'll be in a central location talking to like one or two people. And next thing I know, Mike's like, all right, come here, come here, come here. Here's, here's what I just, here's what just happened. And it's because he's like scoured the room and talked to like 14 different people. And I've talked to like two. Right. So, you know what I mean? Right. But, but that's why it's a good compliment. It's a good complimenting of what we do. You know, I, it's, it's just, it's why it's not finding like-minded. It's finding like valued folks. Um, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, and I think that it's funny also because <clears throat> I would, I would like to, I would like to describe what it's like being on stage and then immediately off stage because I'm a person who has something to say on stage. Everybody look at me. I'm saying this, it's great. And then when I get off stage, uh, I, I, I'm really happy to take feedback and everybody's add value and everything else. Those are the golden nuggets. That, that's the absolute, like, you got to listen, you know, because everybody knows who you are. You don't talk about yourself after you get off stage. 
you're just listening to who everybody else is. And you can capture so much more that way. I do not walk into a room flamboyantly being like, here I am. Like, that's not, that's not the point. You know what I'm saying? I normally no, and that's and that's not what I'm saying that. about you either. No, right. No. So that's the other thing, though. It's that not, a lot it's of not folks... look at me, look at me. But you are you like walk up and you enter into a conversation, whereas in I am more reserved about it. That's that's what I mean. It's yes. not you're not running in like Liberace, going look at me, look at me. <laughs> but you 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 work the room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and what I'm trying to highlight for folks is that if you're not a narcissist, okay, and you don't like talking about yourself all the time, that makes sense. If you're going to work a room and no one knows who you are, then you're going to have to talk about yourself. So you might want to have an elevator pitch ready and then listen. Now you're going to give your elevator pitch like 40, 50 times, however many people you talk to. Well, wouldn't it be better if you just sacked up, hopped up on stage, told them what you were all about, and then got to listen the rest of the time. And so I'm more, I'm more into that mindset to where it's like you publicly state your intentions and where you're going with it and everything else. And it's not a fame thing. It's a, Oh, I recognize that. And I know what you're about. And now people will approach so long as they're looking to add value to one another's mission or whatever it winds up being instead of having to work the entire room. And some people are like, dude, that's fucking nuts. <laughs> I'm like, why would you do that? It's like, why not? Like, Hey, everybody here's this is what I am. This is what I'm doing. And then in other circumstances, I'm just like, leave me, leave me the fuck alone. I don't do that to people or anything else like that. I I'm not recognizable on the streets by any means. But it's just like, I, I really very much so want to be left alone. You know, fame is not something that I am in search of. So there's that weird. Yeah. It's exactly. isolating. It yeah, winds no, up it you're is. isolated by the spotlight. And then you're isolating yourself being like, it's weird. And that's something I think also other entrepreneurs have to encounter because they don't want the spotlight. They just want to pitch their business. They just want, they just want an audience who is right. concentrated. You know what I mean? They don't want to be. Yeah, a, yeah, I do. I totally understand. It's something that we all have to get over. I think also. Yeah, for sure. I think everybody self isolates in some in some way. I think everybody just does that. You know, I I feel that there's some sort of safety. You know, there's definitely safety within that. I don't think that it's a survivability thing, though. Because... No, it, no, no. It's you not. Know. Well, and I, you know, I say it like that because I'm the guy who would be the mountain man, you know? I would, like, ride a bear uh, into the wilderness and slay animals. Okay, and come okay, back with but, okay, for, Grizzly. Right, okay, exactly. Grizzly Adams. Exactly. Okay, Jeremiah Johnson. That's what I'm rocking. What's the modern day guy that's up in Olympia? Mick Dodge. He's a Marine. Yeah, I know. He is a Marine. Mick Dodge is a Marine. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. It's Talk really about funny. isolation. Yeah. But yet he doesn't. I mean, he does, but he doesn't. You know, right. it's like he comes out and he has like his little people that he trades with and does the whole thing it's just you know Dude. again he needs other people and he realizes that but it's he doesn't but yet he does we should totally you know? get mick dodge on all right i know uh, yeah, that i'm pretty sure we you... can pretty sure that that might never happen we're but anyway. we're gonna need a listener to throw a comment a, a quick soft intro over to mick dodge pretty sure mick dodge doesn't have a social media account you that he so? runs probably not you don't think you don't think so? No. Leather you never know, phone. but I mean crazier shit's happened, but maybe a guy needs to just take his cell phone out there and talk to him. Dude, like, I did watch the shit Scott. out of that show. It was pretty funny. Dude, some of his buddies that are out there, I was just like, that's a badass house. You know, mm-hmm. but I mean talk about isolation. Yeah, bro. 
Jesus, there's not enough weed in the world to get you through that. You know, I mean, right. well, maybe, maybe up there, there is maybe, maybe uh, never say never, you know, Jesus. Yeah. Isolation can be good, but it's also one of those things where it's like, you know, you got to seek fellowship also. And you know what? The majority of us know the difference. Uh, right. Let's be honest. Like We know, you know, even if you're a fucked up dude sitting in your house listening to us right now, you know the difference. You know you need to get out there. You know that you would do better if you had fellow veterans around you. You know what I mean? As long as you're not, you know what I'm saying? It's right. People know. People freaking know. Well, and you They're should ducks. get out there. You should get out there, but do it right after you yeah. subscribe, rate, and review the show. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, every once in a while, I just turn it on. I'm just like, hey, what's up? iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, subscribe. Now, share. We really appreciate your five-star reviews. You guys are awesome. Follow us on Facebook, at Cigars and Sea. If you want to join the listener group, be a part of it. Let's do this. Listen to Heroes Media Group. Listen to all of the other podcasts. And then don't feel fucked up. At least you won't feel as fucked up. Right. And you might even laugh. Hmm. Weird. A little bit. Yep. Possible. There you go. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like it. Normally, we're we're smoking and joking and talking C series and all of these other things, but isolation is something that we needed to bring up because there are a lot of folks who get in contact with us and say, yep, I'm definitely one of those people. And that's why I listen to your show. And that's awesome. Please reach out, contact us. If you're feeling isolated and you want to like smoke and joke, or you want to talk shop, uh, you know, kind of like, where do you go now? I mean, that's, we do mentorship through Veterati. Uh, so if you're not already on there, check out Veterati and that's how we do a lot of like the pro bono transition, employment, any of those other different things. That's typically what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're like, Hey man, I'm isolated and I'm an entrepreneur and I want to understand the five paragraph business plan by all means, get in touch with us and we will happily walk through how to use the five paragraph business plan. That is definitely something that we do. So, yeah, get in touch. Be a part of the conversation. Follow us on Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, at Cigars and C. So we're always we're always moving through the community, doing all sorts of stuff. But pretty much the community is on Cigars and C. Yeah, and, and if they, I mean, we really do. And when we say that, just we say that we mean it. We're not we're not bullshitting. Like some people will be like, oh yeah, give us a call. No, I mean like reach out and we'll uh, try to do our best to, you know, get you on the show or talk about whatever you need. We, you know, I mean, we're not perfect. We're not infallible. So don't, don't think that it's never happened that, you know, somebody's fallen through the cracks and we apologize for that, but it, uh, you know, right. It, it, we really mean it when we say it and, you know, Hell yes. We want your feedback, and if you want to be on the show and you're adding value to the community, then let's do it. Do so. Thank you, folks, for listening to another episode of Cigars and Sea Series, and I hope for those of you who are feeling a little isolated, maybe this helps. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast time now, and please share. We really do appreciate all your five-star reviews. Thank you so much. Huge thank you to our sponsors, Heroes Media Group, their network. There are editors. They do awesome work in general. Check them out. Heroes Media Group. Spartan Media, you guys are kick-ass. They built a great website, and uh, thank you for that. VeteransList.us. If you are looking to get featured on VeteransList.us, you can do so for half off. That's 50% off by entering discount code Cigars and C. Check out VeteransList.us the next time you step out the door to go shopping. And uh, shop veteran whenever you get a chance so huge thank you to those guys we do appreciate your support and uh looking forward to another episode of cigars and sea stories on that note we cue the music